If you're sitting in this audience right now and you feel like nobody cares, no one's here to listen, guys, I promise you, me and Nikki, we care about each and every one of y'all. Because we all need someone to lean on. We all need someone to, to help us through the tough times. And that for me, that's Nikki. We're not driving 7,000 miles on this journey because we don't care. Guys, we care. We're here to listen to you guys. We're here to talk to you guys. And I get emotional about this because it really, really, really means a lot to me. And I hate to see kids struggle. I hate it. We've answered tens of thousands of, of kids online. And I hope that the people that are sitting in this room that feel like no one cares, we do. I promise you we do. This is gonna be the biggest trip we've ever taken. So good to see 22 states. So we're stopping at 18 and yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a really fun trip and we're really excited about it. I mean, ever since I was a little kid, we had a place on uh, a lake close to us that uh, we always kept our camper at. And so I've just, I've always loved it. We get to talk to a lot of kids this way. So it's better than flying out to single schools. So we're excited. Really weird. So what are you pulling? You just have to pull hard. I, that's what I was doing. But you gotta pull like pull with these fingers. These stupid doors. It's crazy we've been planning for six months, we're about to leave. Alright. We're excited to go and hitting the road now. So when I was in sixth grade, I was six foot tall and I was 260 pounds. I was a huge kid. I was really big. Looked like Augustus Glue from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> so growing up, I was a teddy bear. Didn't, didn't mess with anybody, didn't fight anybody. So I was a pretty easy target for some guys that wanted to take advantage of that. And I wouldn't stand up for myself. I think we had similar uh, roads growing up. So my story all started on the bus. Uh, there was this kid, I'll never forget it, his name's Travis, but every day he would make a point to come on the bus and say something like, talk about my shoes or talk about my jeans or talk about how tall I was or whatever he said, I felt like everyone was just going along with. So it happens pretty much until I get to up to a freshman in high school. I played pretty much every sport growing up, but I went into the bathroom my freshman year and I saw this flyer and it was talking about basketball practice. Then on the bottom it says practice is held in the mornings and then team practice is held in the afternoons. So then I'm like, oh wait a second, that means I get off the bus, right? And as I started to throw myself into basketball, I realized that I really, really do love the game of basketball. I realize now that that was my outlet. That was my passion. I encourage you to take five minutes today and really think about what that would be, your passion or your outlet. And I'll tell you why that's important. It's important because you know, you'll feel safe and it'll make you feel good, but this is where it kind of gets serious. Y'all, suicide is the leading cause in the last 10 years in teens and young adults. We're here to encourage you because we're hoping that we can get to you early enough to where you can take it and you can brush it to the side, right? And you can say, I got this. You know, this sucked and I hate and this was dumb and this was stupid and I hate that this happened to me, but I'm gonna be all right. And your outlet will help you do that. In my third year, I was predicted to be the starter for the University of Alabama. My dream was starting to come true. And 
I had coaches telling me I was gonna be the starter. I had articles coming out. My local paper said Bozeman's gonna be the starter for University of Alabama. And I bought into it, like 100% bought into it. And when game day came, who do you think wasn't the starter? It was me. I was sitting on the sideline. I was told two hours before kickoff, hey, you're not gonna be the starter. This guy's gonna be the starter. And I was crushed. In that year, I was very, very fortunate. And I was able to meet this lady right here. And she has always had my back. She's always had my best interest. When I say find someone that you can lean on and trust in and put faith in, I don't, I don't just mean just a girlfriend or a wife. I'm talking about it can be your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, a counselor, a principal. Lean on those people because I leaned on her. And that year, I almost hung up my cleats. I almost gave up on my dream. And she's the one who talked me into coming back. And now I stand here and I've won multiple national championships. And I was the team captain. And I was able to be the starter for the Ravens last year. I've been able to accomplish all of my goals so far because of that one decision. So thank you guys so, so much for having us. And you guys were great. That was really good. Was really good. I mean, I thought you thought it went good, right? I thought it was one of the best stops we've made so far. I feel like how they listened was so good. Cause like we talked for a long time and all their questions were like so good. This is what we're here for. I mean, I think this is really our, our calling. And I think too, it's just like the tip of the iceberg. We got a, a lot of schools ahead, but I think it's like no, no short journey of where we've came over the past two and a half years. I think you're right. And then tomorrow, I, I think it's supposed to be like snowing. Is it? Yeah. So depending on how long it takes to get to, get to Flagstaff, we might have to get up a little bit earlier. That's no, fine. Yeah. You say it's fine, and then you try to you're hook up one, a trailer in the snow. You're the one who always dragged it around. <laughs> Absolutely not. I was the one who said this morning, can I just sleep another hour? That was you. Definitely you. Pinky like, swear. No. So you're lying. No, I'm not lying. Are you lying? I'm not lying. Then pinky on it. No, I'm okay. Okay. That's what I thought. So, got to get unhooked, get everything done. All right, 330 miles of Flagstaff, let's go. Get your kicks on. Route 66 is what it's gonna be. You ready for this? Yeah, I, I kind of love the, the smaller crowds because you can really get kind of deep in, in the, all the questions and Brief us oh. first. You guys went to Phoenix, and what'd you do? <laughs> okay, yeah. bullying conference. What were like some of the key takeaways that they told you? Uh, to stand up and to speak to an adult. Warnings of what like you can tell if someone's suicidal. How, what are one of those? Actions. Depressed and like okay. self harm. Yeah. Yeah, self harm's a big one. Yeah. So on the research we did, uh, you, I heard you say stand up, and so it was. What was it, 56% 50, of the time, if someone stands up for the person being bullied, it automatically ends. And I just said like, just one person, like you didn't need a huge group of people. It was just if one person stands up for someone else. And that's why we're on this journey. We're hoping that we can get people like you guys to really be catalysts and really take what we've said and take this message into the schools and really create a culture of change. Thank you guys again. Yeah, thank you all so much. That's, it's been cool. It's cool to have like a small group. So beautiful. And there's that one raven flying across the thing. <laughs> yep. Isn't that crazy? It's just so peaceful. Just this whole trip, you know, starting in Maryland and then coming down through the Virginia mountains and, and then it changes into, you know, down in Alabama and then go through Texas with the big prairies and, and Albuquerque with the plateaus. It's just, it's all so different, but also pretty in its own aspect. You talk about like trying to change the world and it's such a big world, you know, that we live in. And when we talk to the kids and they talk about feeling like they're alone, you know, 
And that's kind of our message is, even in like the deepest canyon in the world, I still feel like you're not alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're never alone. You always have someone there for you. Just trying to get them to feel that way, you know? Mm -hmm. One school at a time.